This unit is register an external service. This is the third uh, unit on the external services module on the Admin Intermediate Trail. My name is Jeff Alhadith. You're welcome to join me as I work my way through this unit. If I come across anything that I think is helpful, I'll link to it in the tips, description, tips section in the description below. You could jump to it and see it there. If um, I don't think this one has a hands-on challenge. No, it doesn't look like it does. Um, so that's not relevant for this one. Um, yeah, so you could either jump to the section or um, just follow along with me. Either one is fine. Okay, um, after completing this unit, you'll be able to define a named credential for your external service. Um, add an external service using a provided schema. Explain how the Apex actions relate to the schema you use. Prerequisites. Name credentials and endpoint access. Like many things in life, before we move forward, we have to complete some prerequisites. In the past unit, we completed some detail about, we covered some detail about schemas used for external services. Since we need a usable schema before we're doing anything else. We didn't talk about name credentials though. That's okay, because this takes only a minute. A name credential provided by the external service provider specifies the URL of the callout endpoint and its required, and its required authentication parameters. I swear that's not English. This description probably sounds familiar. Not to me. In this last unit, we said that schemas contain the endpoint information authentication parameters for the REST-based API web services. I'll take your word for it. Let's go ahead and define a name credential for our org. Go ahead and try it in your playhead, in your trailhead playground. Snow White and the Snowstorm here. Oh, there we go. From setup, enter named credentials in the quick find box, then select name credentials. The name credential specifies a callout endpoint and its required authentication parameters. When setting up callouts, avoid setting authentication parameters for each callout by referencing name cred credential. When setting up callouts, avoid setting authentication parameters for each callout by referencing named credentials. Okay, so if you use named credentials, you don't have to do the authentication parameters each time. You just reference those, or you mention them. I'm really not sure that I know what I'm talking about here. Click new name credential. That's new view. new name credential for label use bank for the URL use h t t t t h external services heroku app.com okay leave the other fields as there and click save I'm just curious. <clears throat> okay, doesn't mean much to me. 
One other item of easy but important housekeeping we need to take care of is to authorize the endpoint access. This is a quick process, but ensures that any callouts made from your org are approved and aren't blocked. From setup, enter remote site settings in a quick find box. Click a new remote site. For remote site name, use Bing service. No space. For the URL, HTTPS. Okay. Click save to finish. Now we get to register the service. Because we already did the heavy lifting, this part is simple. I understand this is supposed to be encouraging, the sentence, but it's really dispiriting because this doesn't feel simple to me at all. From setup, enter external services and then click find box. Then select external services. Click add an external service. For the external service name, use Bing service. For select a name credential, select Bing. Select surface schema JSON. From this, copy the schema information. Oh. Got you. I'm confused. Select service schema JSON. Jason. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I need to do. Click next. A list of your Apex actions appears. You can use the scroll bar to view them all. These actions are now available in to you in Flow. 
We'll create a simple flow in the next unit and show you how to find the actions in the flow palette. Let's look for now the get account method and some of the parameters. No, oh, right here. Okay. The get account method retrieves account information. The get account name parameter specifies the name, the account. There's several output parameters for the get account method too. The codes such as ID 200 correlate to the specific response codes defined in the schema. You can also see this definition is nicely formatted in the Swagger editor when you validate the schema. If you've been with us since unit one, we've now covered the first four steps discussed in that unit. Add an external service provider such as the bank, share it, the REST AP based API scheme of specification. We got this information from our fictional bank. Okay. I guess we did. Based on the specification, a developer, or maybe even you, creates a JSON based schema definition that describes the API. Well, we didn't create this schema ourselves. Review the elements of a schema and the requirements for a good one. When you work with external services, you or your developer can define the schema you need for your use case. The Salesforce administrator declaratively creates a named credential to authenticate to the services endpoint using the URL provided by the external service provider. That was so much developer jargon. Does declaratively just mean like you just like you had to type it out? I think that's what that means. The Salesforce admin administrator declaratively registers the service, like types it in, enters it in, as opposed to programmatically. Is that the come on? That's disappointing. Let's read the snippet. When do you use Decker tools? Declarative features, clicks. Declarative is clicks. Programmatic is code. I figured out that shortcut. Okay. All right. Once you have a schema definition, what prerequisites do you need to? Okay, I'm going to pause. Okay, these quizzes are really killing me. A little ashamed. All right, but that's it. Thanks for watching.